The Boston Bruins are heading out on a four-game road trip on a winning note after defeating the Arizona Coyotes by a score of 3-2 to two on Saturday night. Quick bonus podcast here on a Sunday to get you up to date on all things black and gold. So let's get into it. You're locked on Bruins, your daily podcast on the Boston Bruins. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What is up, Bruins fans, and welcome to the Locked On Boston Bruins podcast. I'm your host, Ian McLaren, and this is a daily show where we discuss all things spoke to be, as well as take a look around the NHL. Today is Sunday, March 13th. I want to thank you so much for making Locked On Bruins your first listen every day. Don't normally jump on on a Sunday for a podcast, but tomorrow I'm going to be talking to Lauren Campbell of uh, Nesson and the Locked On Red Sox podcast. So I wanted to just quickly jump on and talk about last night's game against the Arizona Coyotes. Uh, but first, quick reminder, please do subscribe to the podcast wherever you get your audio feeds and also subscribe on YouTube and never miss an episode. Follow along at Locked NHL Bruins on Twitter, Instagram, and you can find me, my dad jokes, hockey tweets, at Ian C. McLaren. And it was the third line that continued to thrive for the Boston Bruins last night. Craig Smith with the pair of goals, Charlie Coyle with the game winner as the trio of Smith, Coyle, and Frederick continues to give the Bruins some much-needed depth scoring. Uh, Charlie Coyle with a wicked backhander past the glove of Arizona Coyotes goalie Karel Vodmelka. And, um, you know, he said he wasn't thinking shot on that play, but there was no passing lane. The puck was bobbling a bit, taking it to the net, and... um, he thought maybe get a rebound. Smitty could put it home for the hat trick, but he said he got lucky with the placement, although it was quite exceptional. Um, the Bruins um, continued to get production from this third line as Coyle, second multi point game in his last three. He has a point streak of three games, two goals, three assists. Uh, he has 12 points. Four goals, eight assists in his last 14 games. Uh, And Craig Smith just on fire these days with seven goals uh, over his last five games. Um, The 32-year-old playing his best hockey for the Boston Bruins this season uh, over this stretch. And, you know, prior to this stretch, he was off his perennial 20-goal pace, just six through 47 games. But uh, now he is up to 13 goals, 27 points in 52 games, and certainly uh, kind of becoming that secondary score that the Bruins hoped he would be when they signed him uh, prior to the beginning of last season. Uh, Frederick was as well has started to chip in a bit more offensively uh, over his last few games. Uh, He had, you know, the first three point game of his career. He had a goal last week against the Kings, two assists last night. So that's six points in his last uh, five games, which is the most productive stretch of his career as well. You know, we've always talked about the Bruins needing secondary scoring. If you think back to the 2011 Boston Bruins, uh, they had just a fantastic third line. And if you can get see in, even semi-consistent goal scoring from your third line in the playoffs, uh, then you are in a good position uh, to win. The Bruins, of course, had penciled Charlie Coyle in as the second-line center this season, probably more suited to a third-line role. 
his contract probably reflects more of a second line role. Uh, but Eric Howla filling in there right now, and we'll see if that is addressed prior to the trade deadline or if they feel they're okay down the middle with um, Bergeron, Howla, Coyle, Nosek. Those are probably the four centers they had pictured, maybe not in that particular order. Before we talk more about the third line and also – um, what's next for the Boston Bruins? A quick word about Bet Online. Bet Online is your number one spot for sports wagering in 2022. College basketball is ramping up. All the latest odds, contests, and player props can be found at betonline.net, the number one source for all your sports betting needs and info. Uh, they have you covered not just for basketball, obviously, but also hockey, baseball. All your sports wagering information, live betting, favorite Vegas casino games. Head to their website today. Use your mobile device to learn more about the trends in action at betonline.net. Now, Bruce Cassidy talking about this third line. uh, He said, you know, they initially struggled to find the score sheet despite developing some quick chemistry after they were put together. But they found a formula that has led to a bevy of opportunities in the offensive zone. And uh, they're a trio, he says, that can be relied upon in every situation. He said, quote, they're playing to the identity of how they would need to play to score on a regular basis, which is typically they're playing behind the D, winning pucks, getting pucks back, good four checks, in sync together in the O zone with their spacing. They're scoring a lot of goals like that. Uh, They've capitalized on the rush by not overthinking it. Again, the goal Charlie scored, they gave him a path to the net, took away the two-on-one opportunity, so he took the shot. And, you know, as Michael Scott says, you miss 100% of the shots you don't take, Wayne Gretzky. And um, they're doing a good job with so many things. Uh, Frederick playing well along the boards. Got to stay out of the penalty box. Um, And on that uh, last goal, Frederick didn't just throw the puck away when he had it in the O-zone. He puts it in purpose so the next guy uh, can do the next smart thing. And as a coach, you are going to play them against anyone so they get an opportunity when they're making smart decisions like that. Uh, Craig Smith says... They are still a bit of a work in progress. All three are working hard, trying to get in the right areas, trying to shoot the puck more. Been an emphasis when we get in the zone. Uh, Charlie and Trent are so good at protecting the puck, and they can create a lot of stuff by uh, moving their feet, being patient, finding the right guy. Now, again, if you look at the Bruins' recent success, some of that is certainly coming from this third line. The second line, Hall, Pasternak, Hala continues to roll. Uh, what will become of Jake DeBrusque as we head into this stretch leading up to the trade deadline? The Bruins have uh, three games remaining before the trade deadline at Chicago on Tuesday, at Minnesota on Wednesday, at Winnipeg on Friday. Trade deadline occurs at 3 p.m. Eastern on Monday the 21st. That night they play in Montreal. So it's quite possible that Jake DeBrusque has played his final game as a member of the Boston Bruins, depending on whether he is moved. He did have that heater on the West Coast road trip, but he has cooled off in recent games. One goal over his last six games, and his shot totals have been dropping a bit as well. Zero shots last night, which is Pretty unacceptable when you're playing with Patrice Bergeron and Brad Marchand. He had one shot previous game against Chicago, only two against LA, uh, four back last week against Columbus in which he scored a goal, but then only one in Vegas. So um, that would be a total of eight shots over his last 
five games, uh, which, you know, we talk about his streakiness, his inconsistency. He was riding that high on the hot streak after being popped up to the top line, but now has certainly uh, cooled off a bit, and we'll see if that affects his trade value at all. But again, acquiring general managers, generally savvy enough to know that uh, he is a streaky player. His qualifying offer is likely what is keeping um, general managers from acquiring him, seeing as it's quite expensive for a guy who um, is not super consistent, to be honest. Some possible trade deadline implications from last night's game as Coyotes defenseman Jacob Chikrin left the game in the second period following a collision, I believe, with Derek Forbort. No update was provided, but hopeful that he's day-to-day. Um, and it's believed the Bruins are in on Chikrin or interested at the very least, uh, but they seem to be trying to swing for the fences on this deal, so it could be cost prohibitive for the Boston Bruins. Anyways, that's it for today's episode of Locked On Boston Bruins. A quick bonus pod here. Big Bear of the Night goes to Craig Smith for the two goals. A very impressive run, but you know, you got to look like when Jake DeBrusque was on a hot streak, you have to look at the percentages. Uh, they're riding pretty high right now. Um, eventually they will cool off, but it's nice to see that they're capable of contributing night in, night out. Each guy on that line with two points last night, going to give Smith the edge because he got uh, the two goals, but all three of them playing like big bears last night for sure. Uh, Former Bruin Nick Ritchie with the revenge goal that wasn't enough for the Bruins. Good on them for, you know, went up 2-0, gave up two goals to the Coyotes to tie it, and then Frederick, uh, sorry, Coyle getting the game winner. In a game, the Bruins deserved to win, out shooting the Coyotes by a margin of 40-29. to Like I said, we'll be back tomorrow with a chat with Lauren Campbell and uh, keep you up to date with all things black and gold here on the Locked On Boston Bruins podcast part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your favorite team every single day. Have a great Sunday, friends. Enjoy the Heritage Classic. I'll be watching that later. Leafs, Sabres, no rooting interest, but I do have some fantasy guys that I hope uh, perform. It's a beautiful snowy day up here in southern Ontario, so it should be fun to watch for sure. Take care, friends, and have a great one.